Hey, let's solve some problems in the world of magazine publishing, okay? And let me help you recognize danger signs as you continue working toward making that next million. I'm John Lau, President of Magazine Media Strategies. Thanks for joining me today, and thanks to Schweike Media for making this a part of their webinar series. I work with publishers in these crazy times to help them be more productive and take more money to their bottom lines. Here's a look at some of the magazines I've founded or managed in a variety of markets. And as you might expect, almost all encountered problems of one kind or another. What I'm going to talk about today, to keep you on a path to success, is how many of those problems were recognized and what you can do when you run up against the same kinds of problems. So let's dig into our topic. 10 Signs Magazine Publishers Need Help, Where to Get It, and What to Do About It. This is primarily directed to entrepreneurs and small to medium-sized publishers, many who publish single titles in niche magazines and who entered the industry without a strong business background, and those who have limited experience specifically in magazine publishing. However, the concerns and suggestions are certainly not limited to these types of companies and individuals. At one time or another, we all come up against matters in business, and life for that matter, that we're not prepared for. Maybe due to inexperience in a particular area, maybe because of market changes or economic concerns, or other matters beyond our control. When you're faced with such matters, give it your all to address them, but I urge you, don't be reluctant to ask for help. Don't think you can always handle everything. So, to stay on the right foot, and hopefully avoid danger, just don't get too comfortable. Recently, a friend asked me to review his notes for an upcoming presentation. After looking them over, I told him I thought he was headed in the right direction, but there were a couple of misspelled words and a questionable statement or two. I thought this was simply the result of his working too fast and that he would make changes for his final draft. But after I mentioned it, I found he actually didn't know how to spell the words, had no intention of further checking his statements, and, as a consequence, was just plain comfortable with it. Had no reason to check things out, he said. Thought the words were spelled correctly, the statement's correct. Interesting, isn't it? He was just comfortable, and there was apparently nothing to alert him to the concerns. This kind of situation, of course, has happened to all of us. We think we have the best contracts possible with our suppliers. Why review them? We think our financials are in order. Think we have the best accountant ever. Why take a closer look? Love our sales team. They've always done well, previously. So why explore changes? We make a profit from print, though it is dwindling. Why explore other platforms? And so it goes. In many cases, we've all been too comfortable in one form or another, or failed to have our businesses structured so that problem areas would be red flagged early on. Or we simply lack the necessary experience to manage well. And being too comfortable does have consequences. We don't update our business plan or explore new revenue streams or look into new platforms because we're too comfortable with our traditional business model. We write off large amounts of receivables because we don't keep up with outstanding debts, because we don't want to upset our relationships with advertisers or others even when we face shortfalls or have to borrow. We don't account for lost circulation and waning reader engagement or significantly reduced newsstand draws. Don't look into new software or update what we have. We pay too much for printing and other services, but we like our printer and we don't want to change. We overpay or underpay staff and outsourced services, and so it goes on and on. This comfort level, which is more prevalent than you may think, can lead to serious problems over time, if not in the short term then it may be too late. Unfortunately, in the last few years, it's been too late for numerous publishers who have seen their businesses die. Some recognized the problems they were facing and tried to turn matters around, but it was too late. Others faced conditions beyond anyone's control, and still others never knew what hit them. Profits, if there were any to start with, dwindled as revenue and expenses both became problems. Companies began moving advertising in other directions, digital, mobile, video online, events, social media, and so on. And buys did not go as deep into markets as previously. Consolidation reduced the number of advertisers in various markets. Postal rates increased, 
Traditional business models did not hold up well. New technology became more prevalent. Newsstands and bookstores faced major distribution changes. Many conditions changed more quickly than publishers were able to meet, and they're still changing. So what can you do? This is where help was needed and is needed. And whatever the concern, as I often preach, is that there's always help available, but it's not always apparent. You just have to know what to be aware of, then find the right help for your needs. So what signs do you look for? Here are 10 and the assumptions that go with them. Number one, you are consistently getting away from your business plan, or you don't have a business plan. The assumption you have a good market-specific plan that you have been able to rely on to keep you on target to your goals. There's nothing wrong with making reasonable changes, and you do want to keep your plan up to date. But if you're not sure how to do so or how to get back on track, you need help. Number two, you're having cash flow problems. Assumption, you are sufficiently capitalized and aren't consistently trying to overcome a less than sufficient capitalization. You have reliable financial statements, which you know how to use, and other essential reports with appropriate metrics, sales, circulation, marketing, etc. Most companies can deal with occasional shortfalls, but if there is a problem that's recurrent or developing beyond a brief period of time, you need to address it. Three, your revenue is falling, your salespeople can't tell you why. Assumption, overall sales have been good or at least competitive and satisfactory. You've been satisfied with your sales staff, and they've been in touch with advertisers, sponsors, and others sufficiently so to tell you why they were not getting certain business and why they did. Now they've hit a wall, you don't know what adjustments to make. Four, your circulation and subscription renewals are consistently down, and distribution channels are an increasing concern. Assumption, Overall, circulation and renewal rates have been acceptable. Five, you're repeatedly late in closing issues and making deadlines. Assumption, you've almost always been on time and have a capable editorial and production staff. Six, your editorial is becoming stale. You're losing reader engagement. Assumption, previously, your content has been well received. You do have reliable metrics to support engagement. Seven, your staff is not engaged. Assumption, they have been engaged. Now, you see a marked difference in behavior and attitude day to day. People are coming in late. There are increased absences. Excuses are piling up. Turnover is increasing. Extra effort is missing. Things are just not what they should be. Eight, you're resistant to new ideas, new media, and innovation. Assumption, Previously, your traditional business model has served you well. However, you're not sure it will keep you on the right track in the future. You see a change in the ways that advertising is being sold and bought. You're not comfortable with it. You also see new technology and new platforms introduced and used. You don't understand things as well as you should. Consequently, your business remains virtually static. Nine, your market is changing. Assumption. Previously, there's only been one path to your goals. The number of advertisers and total accounts in your market are now shrinking due to several factors, including consolidation, corporate pressure to reduce certain ad spending, advertising for products and services going in a new direction, etc. And your audience has more options for their information and entertainment. Ten, your anxiety over business matters exceeds its, quote, normal level. Assumption, you don't know whether to borrow or invest more money, hire or fire more people, look into selling, even get psychological help, or exactly what. You just don't know which way to turn. So now that you know the signs, how will you recognize them? Some should be self-evident, or there should be some kind of warning sign, a bell ringing, a red flag waving, or some other, perhaps more subtle alert. Are you going to notice? First of all, you should be organized so that negative matters come to your attention quickly. Most problems and concerns are obvious if you are alert and active in the day-to-day -day operation of your business. However, if you're not, or you depend on department heads, managers, or others at least one step or more removed from you, you must stay in close touch. 
You should also have regular reports and communication that will provide the necessary alerts. Now let's continue with the assumption that you are able to determine that you do need help according to any of the points itemized. So where can you get it? The first place to look, of course, is within your own organization. Do you personally have the capability to address the concerns? Are there those on your staff who can? Do you belong to any associations that have individuals or programs that could help? Would you trust discussing things with a colleague at another company? Could your printer help? Your banker? Your accountant? Others? Consultants provide another source of help. Unfortunately, they're sometimes misunderstood to be too expensive. While this is sometimes true, most independent consultants price their services reasonably and competitively, usually well below large corporate consultants. And based on their experience, they can often find solutions quickly and provide a fresh, unbiased, timely, and objective course of action, saving you both time and money overall. And when you're considering consultants, be sure to interview those with industry-specific experience. Certainly general business principles apply, but the magazine business has its own set of concerns and you want someone who has been in your shoes or is at least familiar with the concerns you have. Regardless of which way you turn, don't wait so late in getting help that regardless of the source, it's too late. Then things can't be fixed, matters can't be successfully addressed. The phrase, it's never too late, does not apply. So now that you've determined how you can get help, just what can you do about it? Let's look at concerns point by point with suggestions to get you headed in the right direction and tackle your concerns. Keep in mind that these suggestions are not going to fit every situation and they're in no way intended to be complete. They are to help you get started in working with whatever source you choose and it should be obvious that you will have to delve much deeper into each concern and that you use sources specifically in those areas of expertise that they provide and that fit your concerns. So let's start with your business plan. I'll refer to slides as 1A, 2A, etc. to correspond with earlier slides on the same point. So 1A, you're consistently getting away from your business plan or you don't have one. If you don't have one, produce it. Even if you've been in business for several years, you should understand your business and what you want to do for the most part, also how you're going to do it, better than anyone. And your plan should in great part be a product of your making, at least in concept. I know, you may say you have it all in your head. Still, it should be written and shared with your staff. Get it on paper. This is not just a tool for investors. It's your game plan. It should be your map to success. You should refer to it often to be sure you're staying on track and update it reasonably. You might start with a simple action plan, which will become a part of your larger business plan. If you're not familiar with form or structure, you can get help from one of the sources previously mentioned. And be sure your plan is realistic and not just something to produce and tuck away so you can say you have one. Next, let's look at cash flow problems. 2A. The first thing to determine, of course, is where things stand financially and why there's a problem. Do you have a revenue problem or an expense problem or both? Negative cash flow can result from waning revenues, slow collections, or out-of-line expenses, all of which need close examination. Look at your financial statements for insight, typically your income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, and be sure you know how to use the statements. Don't depend entirely on someone else's interpretation. Be sure you're keeping up with key performance indicators and the basic operation of your business. What are you doing to increase sales? Profits, margins, reduce expenses, expedite collections, innovate. Do you have a reliable business model to gauge percentages of what's being spent in each category? Are your finances in line for each category? Advertising and marketing, issue production, circulation and distribution, G&A, etc.? Are you staying on top of your billings and collections? Are your credit terms in line with the average time it takes you to collect receivables? Do you have a specific approach to deal with late receivables? Ad agencies are notoriously slow in paying, as you may well know. Are you paying bills on time? 
you should negotiate the longest term possible for your payables without incurring late fees, of course. If you're not sure about certain items, discuss them in detail with your accountant. Remember, your statement should be organized on an industry-specific basis to give you the specific information you need. Structure in this regard is most important, and cash flow is a critical part of your business. I cannot overemphasize this fact. 3A. Your ad sales and revenue from other streams are consistently falling. Which of your product offerings are affected? Print, digital, mobile, video, events, other? This is not something that should have happened overnight. You probably have been aware of this for a while, so what are you doing about it? Determine whether you have a market problem or a sales problem or both. And why can't your salespeople tell you what the problem is? Are they well trained about your products and how they should be sold in today's changing marketplace? Do they have the latest sales tools to compete and provide information buyers want and need today? Do they know how to use these tools? Could their presentations be improved? Are you facing a shrinking market? Is there a new competitor on the scene? Are you facing misperceptions in the marketplace? Number four, you're losing circulation. From an economic and structural standpoint, be sure you have the lowest but most effective and most competitive circulation as your target. You don't want to pay for circulation that does not provide a corresponding benefit. So assuming you're in line in this regard, is falling circ a product of your lack of effort or reluctance to spend to maintain it? Or is all circ in your market falling? Do you know the universe of the audience in your market? The key to managing the situation is understanding why CERC is falling, which could be said about all the signs of trouble, of course. Circulation numbers can be almost solely a product of how much is spent to acquire and maintain them, assuming a market is viable and effective. Do you have a reliable fulfillment program? Where's your audience? Are they getting content elsewhere? Do you have reliable information in this regard? Have you been tracking subscription renewals? Single copy sales? Are your online marketing metrics in order? Are you measuring unique visitors, page views, visitor engagement, conversion rates? Recognize too that markets do dry up and in certain situations no amount of money can make a difference in the long run. Be sure you're using all appropriate tools available to reach your audience. Email, websites, direct mail, wraps, retail newsstands, online newsstands, social media, apps, agencies, you can probably think of others. And that you're testing your concepts and creative packages and conducting independent reader studies. The key here being independent. 5A, you're late in closing issues and making deadlines. This can be a very damaging matter to your audience and advertisers and is something you should be able to fix internally. It should be immediately telling, and based on assumptions made earlier, I'm tempted to say just fix it and let it go at that. This shouldn't be a complex matter. Work backwards from your deadlines, further assuming there's no problem with your production staff, and identify the problem and enforce your deadlines. Too often, they are simply not enforced. 6A, your editorial is becoming stale. What do you do to evaluate your editorial? Have you conducted independent audience surveys? How often? Have they provided useful information? Have you acted on this information? When was your last redesign? Do you have metrics to compare the performance of issues, quarters, seasons, year over year? If not, you should develop them in some form. Do you promote your editorial? Do you regularly read competing magazines? What are your competitors doing that you're not? Review these concerns with your staff. 7a, your staff is not engaged. Do you have a written statement of policy regarding hours, production, behavior, etc.? In other words, an employee manual. Do your employees have a copy? Do you enforce it? Have you let concerns slide in the past? Talk to your staff individually about your concerns. Don't just dictate. Communication is key, two-way communication. Be sure you understand their concerns and they understand and buy into your plans. 
This is where sharing your business plan can help. 8A, you're resistant to new ideas. Without getting into how to use what's new, let's focus briefly on why you're resistant to new ideas, including new technology. And to go forward, you need to admit that you've been resistant. Being resistant is often the result of not understanding how things work. Don't let time catch up with you. Getting and staying up to date on new ideas, opportunities, and technology is a must for publishers who expect to grow and succeed. And it's important to recognize what you don't know and understand and to find ways to catch up. And there are a lot of ways to do so. Among them are these. Help from those of your staff or other colleagues or friends who are technically proficient. Online training videos and webinars, many of which are free. Trade shows, seminars. Local college and tech schools, special and advanced or basic classes. Industry newsletters, library, books, which can be online. Your printer and other suppliers. A personal coach or consultant. 9A, your market is changing. Markets have changed for a variety of reasons foremost being a weak economy, which has resulted in a smaller base of accounts with fewer ad dollars to spend, particularly in print. You may very well be facing this. Additionally, your audience may be shrinking or getting more of its information and entertainment from tablets, smartphones, and the like. At one time or another, some markets have been hit harder than others, such as real estate, housing, electronics and science, trucking, home fashion, music and entertainment, teen, women's and children's, all of these and more have contracted in one way or another and continue to face serious concerns. Determine what your advertisers want and how your advertisers want information, or rather how your audience wants information, delivered, and decide how you can best address these concerns. Be aware that whatever changes you make may require an updated business plan. 10A, your anxiety over business matters exceeds, quote, normal. Of course, we can all debate what normal is in this crazy business, and I'm not sure I have a good answer to that. I'd love to hear yours. The magazine business itself has gone through substantial changes in the last several years and continues to change. You must adapt, and part of doing so includes your continuing education. Publishers in different markets are faced with varying sets of problems and concerns and must recognize what these changes are and take action. Remember, action relieves anxiety. Just be sure to take action in the right direction. I hope this presentation will motivate you to take a closer look at your business and get help when necessary. If you have questions or concerns about what's going on with your magazines or in the industry, I'll be glad to help or just talk. I'd love to hear, too, how you've overcome problems in your business, particularly if you've had outside help. You can also send me a private message at johnlau at bellsouth.net or call 901-634-9347 as well as visit me on LinkedIn. And thanks again for joining me today.